How are we doing, boys? Let me set the stage for you. It's mid-July, circa 2008, and you are 11 years old. It's 5 a.m., and you and a group of friends are huddled around your mom's laptop surfing the internet. Your brains are melted from watching a stream of strangers on Omegle, as well as sketch comedy on YouTube. In the background, your old CRT TV is tuned to Adult Swim. The coveted 5 a.m. time slot on Adult Swim features a whole slew of shows that you've never heard of before. Shows like Space Coast Coast to Coast, The Brack Show, and The Oblongs. But as the bumper music fades into the next show, you're presented with something new. One, two, three, four. <laughs> A smooth, slightly sped up instrumental version of Cake's Italian Leather Sofa leads us into this show about two brothers, Andy and Kevin French, and their lives in the fictional neighborhood of Mission Hill in the city of Cosmopolis. The neighborhood of Mission Hill, according to creators Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein, is an amalgamation of Boston's Mission Hill, the Mission District of San Francisco, Silver Lake in Los Angeles, and Brooklyn, New York making it the ultimate hipster playground. The show was developed for the now defunct WB Network, which ran on cable television from 1995 until 2008. In 1999, the network bought several animated adult sitcoms geared towards young males between the ages of 18 to 25 to bolster its lineup. These shows also included The PJ, starring Eddie Murphy, and The Oblong, starring Will Ferrell. However, in the two-year gap between these three shows beginning their production and their actual airing, the WB had completely rebranded itself as a network. It was essentially the CW of the early 2000s, airing melodramatic teen dramas such as Dawson's Creek. These dramas were geared towards a completely different audience audience than these cartoons, which now, two years later, were due to begin airing. In an interview, co-creator Bill Oakley states the following. In the time they ordered the show and the time it had appeared on the air, the network had redefined itself. They had this leftover programming, and by the time they figured out we shouldn't be lumped in together, we were in danger of killing that entire network. We hugely damaged the ratings of those other shows. After the WB went off air, the shows found temporary homes with their first season reruns airing on Adult Swim in the US and Teletoon in Canada. It was there that they developed small cult followings before being essentially wiped from the face of the earth. Except not really, because you can... Moscow. Except not really, because you can find all of these shows for free on YouTube. Like I said before, the show's main character is Andy French, voiced by William Langham. Andy is an aspiring cartoonist and works a day job in a mattress store to get by. He lives in a loft in the trendy neighborhood of Mission Hill with his high school best friend, Jim, voiced by Brian Pacine. I'll get the keys. Ow, what happened to the couch? We moved it over there last week, remember? Oh, yeah. And their other roommate and friend, a hippie woman named Posey, voiced by Vicki Lewis. So that's legitimate massage, huh? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> what the hell was that about? I didn't want him to fall off the roof and not feel it. Andy lives the carefree lifestyle of a mid-twenties slacker until one day his parents decide they're going to move to Wyoming. They have Andy come by their old house under the pretense that he's going to be taking care of their dog Stogie. But while he's there, they also pull one of the sh** moves I've ever seen and say, Oh, by the way, uh, your 17-year-old brother Kevin doesn't want to come to Wyoming with us. Uh, you want to just take care of him for a little bit? Also, it doesn't matter what you say because you don't really have a choice. I'm not even exaggerating either. That's exactly how the conversation goes. Uh, do I even have a choice? No, not really. Kevin, come in here. Andy would love to have you come live with him. This is a problem because Andy's brother Kevin, voiced by Scott Menville, is such an insufferable tattletale dork that I want to hold his head in toilet water until his struggling stops. What if they ask for my ID? I could get arrested. Then I'll never get into a good college. All because I wanted to hear Scott. Don't worry, guys. I'm kidding. Sort of. Kevin's annoying at first, but he does grow on you. The show revolves around the two brothers and their day-to-day -day lives in Mission Hill. And the supporting cast, along with Andy's roommates, includes an elderly gay couple named Gus and Wally, voiced by Nick Jameson and Tom Kinney, respectively. Ah! You've got a knife sticking out of your head! Yeah, don't fuss over it. Don't. Bus, we've got to get you to a hospital. Eh, go to a hospital. Doctors always find something wrong with you. May I at least ask what happened? Eh, some punk attacked me on the bridge. Threw him over. 
Mm. Great pickle loaf sandwich, honey. May I at least stop badgering me? And another young couple named Natalie and Carlos and their young baby. <sighs> Looks like we have a new pet. Yeah, okay. After all that time in the lab, I guess he could use a little love. You have no idea the kind of cruelty these animals endure. Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. The show's designs were developed by supervising director and designer Lauren McMullen. Lauren has also done work on The Critic, King of the Hill, The Simpsons, and Avatar The Last Airbender. The art design is modern, but also takes some influences from classic rubber hose animation. And this, along with its neon color palette, gives the show a very unique identity. The show's humor varies widely, from classic slapstick cartoon antics to satirization of pop culture and social issues of the early 2000s. The division between Andy's laid-back, partying lifestyle and Kevin's studious and uptight demeanor function as the catalyst to most conflict in the episode. Mission Hill only ran for 13 episodes and was ahead of its time in a lot of ways. Although some of its stories are a little bit rough around the edges, I would argue that the first season of any show, especially sitcoms and especially animated sitcoms, tend to be the weakest. The show's satirization of the pop culture influences of its era, as well as its progressive messaging, put it a little bit ahead of its time pretty well, but the thing that I really like about this show is the way it so perfectly encapsulates the feeling of mediocrity and falling behind that I feel like we all struggle with in our mid to late 20s. Here's an example of what I mean. Towards the end of the show, the store that Andy works at is seized by the IRS because his boss has refused to pay taxes. Andy then begins collecting unemployment, staying home, and getting drunk. Eventually, Jim convinces him to come check things out at the advertising agency he works for. Andy's unimpressed with office culture and sees applying for this job Job as selling out. Jim tries to convince him otherwise with a little beer ticket speech. I'm not exactly the corporate type. Laid back is more my style. Sure. Uh, but let me show you something. That's a beer ticket, man. You give this to a guy at a liquor store, and he gives you a lot of beer. Andy turns him down again before stepping into the elevator, and on the way down, he hears dozens of conversations from people who are the same age or even younger than him. What a bunch of button-down worker bees. Yeah, who needs that suit and tie crap? I write software in my underpants and they still buy it for 600k a pop. So I closed escrow this weekend. Cool, you can live there a couple years and then when you're 26, leverage it for something bigger. He's the hottest commercial director in town and he's only 25. Well, it's not everyone who can direct a talking chihuahua. And it's sad, actually. He's 24 and still It's hasn't true, been. you really have to get a foothold by your mid-20s. He really missed the boat on that one. He's only 25. He's 24 and still Get a foothold by your mid-20s. He really missed the boat on that one. <laughs> And he begins to realize that every single one of these people is substantially further ahead in every aspect of life than he is. Andy eventually realizes that while being a cartoonist is exactly what he wants to do, it doesn't mean that he can't also work a job that's going to provide him with his basic necessities like a roof over his head or health insurance while also working on being a cartoonist. He does end up liking the job a fair amount since it does provide him with a small creative outlet and allows him to work with his best friend. He also continues to work on his art and getting published for himself. Now, am I defending a system that forces us to make these decisions between survival and our passions? A decision which isn't always mutually exclusive, but sometimes very much is? No, absolutely not. I'm not defending that, and I never will. But I do feel like this perfectly encapsulates being in your 20s. The feeling of still figuring yourself out, and the feeling of wanting to follow your passions, but also wanting to reach the same milestones at the same time as your peers. After you graduate high school, life does begin to move a lot faster. And it's easy to compare yourself to your peers because for so much of your lives, you were all on the same level. In the modern era, social media can exacerbate this feeling of inadequacy. People are always sharing the most positive aspects of their lives without showing the struggles and the hardships that it took to get there. When you're constantly comparing yourself to others, especially people that you feel like are ahead of you, it becomes easier to give up on the things you like out of a perceived necessity to grow up. But the thing is, is this isn't necessary. We don't have to give up on the things that we like to grow up, and we shouldn't. The things that we like and our passions make us who we are. 
Now, am I telling you to quit your job right now and pursue your passion no matter what? No, absolutely not, of course not. And if I was, you shouldn't listen to me because I am stupid. I absolutely don't think that doing what you want to do with your life is wrong. And I don't think that your passions need to provide you with substantial income in order for them to be substantial to you. But if you do intend to turn your passion into a living, you should definitely have a plan first so that you can always make sure you have a roof over your head and food in your pantry. Believe me, that's exactly what I'm doing right now because I've had plenty of endeavors where I've dove right in and walked away going, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. The most important thing to keep in mind with this sort of thing is there is no timeline. You don't have to have anything done by a certain age to be successful or for it to matter, and you don't have to start something by a certain age to be good at it. Your progress and your struggles are your own. Life's a marathon, not a race, and we all get to the same finish line eventually. Mission Hill was a pretty cool little show, and I think the struggle of being young and trying to figure yourself out while you get a foothold in the real world is a pretty universal experience that we can all relate to. If you like this video, please consider giving me a like or subscribing or commenting. Any engagement helps my videos a lot. My name is Isaiah, and thank you for watching my video.